Hey, Pastor Ray Barnett with you. Glad that you could be with me here on the Oasis. And as always, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. As I've been saying, it's an absolute <clears throat> beautiful fall so far. Seems uh, as though a uh, weather report says it's going to continue this week. High 70s. Definitely starting to, trees are definitely starting to turn yellows, oranges. Beautiful, beautiful sight. Today I want to talk to you about <clears throat> your position and your disposition. Now, I think uh, having a position is easy enough to explain. Well, uh, let's talk politics. Well, not talk politics, I'm going to mention politics. If I asked you, what's your position on, and mention some political area of life, then, you know, if you're an open person, honest, and you have, most people have a political opinion, you state your position. That's your position. In Christianity, we have a lot of agreement on many of the cardinal issues. Perhaps I should say all of the cardinal issues. And then difference of agreement on some of the non-essential doctrines of the Bible concerning eternity and salvation. In those instances, people take a position. Even with the cardinal truths, we take a position that's generally agreed upon across denominational lines. But when it comes to some of the particulars, then we have a, another position. All right, so you get the idea. You have a position on this doctrine of the Bible. You have a position that you take on this political person or a political issue, and then we just keep on going. So position is very easy to understand, but it's this position that I want to accent today. What is your disposition? Now, Nervous symptoms, as we, I, continue to reiterate, make you tense. That has a habit of making the average person disposed to being irritable. And if you're going to rid yourself of nervous symptoms, number one, you got to recognize that you're disposed, could even say predisposed, but disposed to, on any one given day, being irritable. You could also say frightened. Angry is pretty much the same thing in my mind, or at least for this explanation as being irritable. So you're already disposed to being irritable. Now here's the thing. We know that anger as well as fear produce more tenseness in the, the body via the brain and that tenseness, as it increases, is going to increase your symptoms, whatever they may be. could also spawn new symptoms, whatever they may be. <laughs> they're usually not good. In fact, they're always not good. So, understand, okay, understand. If you're more on the fearful type, or if you're more on the angry type, they both have the same effect on the nervous system and the muscles get tense and you get symptoms. The more tense that your muscles get, the more the brain is registering danger or whatever, uh, the more, the worse they're going to get. But your disposition, and for the sake of argument, for many of you is irritability. Because, listen, you're not feeling good and your symptoms have been with you for days, weeks, months, or years. So you're already disposed to being irritable, easily frightened, nervous. doesn't matter. What I'm trying to uh, uncover for you is what it means to be have a position and then a disposition. Now, again, a position is pretty easy to understand. Whatever your uh, assessment is of your own condition, your own nervous symptoms, 
That's your position. If you think you're incurable, well, you're probably probably not watching this broadcast or this channel. If you think there's hope, then you're going to take what the book says, the Bible, and uh, what help I can offer you, and that's your position, that you believe that there is an answer. But I'm talking about the comparison between your position and your disposition. So, I'm sure some of you are old enough to have heard the expression street angel, house devil. What that means is that people who are disposed to being irritable and angry or fearful and nervous, which often leads right back to being irritable. <laughs> it's amazing for all of us. Come on, it's, it's just amazing how you could be in a really bad mood, let's say, inside your home. That's the house devil part. And walk out the door, go to the store, church meeting, uh, wh whatever you go to. And all of a sudden, it's just like you're just a completely different person. You're amiable, you're friendly, you smile. And uh, to draw out the illustration further, let's say you had a real knock-down, dragged-out, knuckle-busting fight with uh, your spouse or someone in your family. Again, walk straight out the door, see some friends, wave. For me, I go to the gym every day. Uh, no matter how bad I may, my morning may have been, at least in my view, it's not there when I'm at the gym. Now, here's the thing, and this is, this is wisdom for you with the nervous symptoms, which is why you watch this channel. What changed? Is it, I mean, your symptoms... Um, are still there. The nervous system that you were born with is still there in the heart and all of this. What has changed? Well, it's your, not your disposition, but now we'll go a little further and I'll just briefly touch on that, on a predisposition. <laughs> so we have position, disposition, and predisposition. You're predisposed to be friendly with those who are outside your home for whatever the reason may be, could be just reputation it could be just being you know common courtesy being friendly um, could be other reasons walk back in the door and go right back into the uh, the other person that again we all can be all right well what does this have to do with overcoming my symptoms of palpitations and choking feeling and tightness in the stomach and spasms and all these hundreds of symptoms that you get when you have a nervous uh, disorder, anxiety, depression, or mental health diagnoses is that this is temper. And temper is a sworn enemy of peace or, for you, healing. On the sheet that I've been telling you to download, you can get it from our website, Pastor Ray Barnett, Time for Truth Ministries, the 12 principles are renewed, this is what we're using as a syllabus. Number five is anger is the friend of anxiety and the enemy of serenity. The verse is Ephesians 4, 26, be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In Ephesians 4, 26, what the Bible is saying is that, I'll paraphrase it for you and give a commentary on it. It's saying that we all get angry, just don't go to bed angry. Now that's especially important if you're married, living with somebody, family members. Don't go to bed angry. Well, why is that? Well, we'll just jump right to our topic. You're going to produce symptoms. I mean, there's a lot of things that's wrong with it, but you're going to start producing symptoms, more symptoms, because you're already disposed to that uh, type of temperament that goes along with these uh, symptoms that you have and your diagnosis and your condition. So what we want to do, what you want to do, is to learn how, be, how to become a street angel and a, uh, 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 an angel in the house as well, using angel as just a metaphor. In other words, you want to be able to control your temper. I heard a quote from Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor, who was also a philosopher, 
wrote his work called Meditations, that the greatest, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, don't remember the exact quote, but the greatest answer to anger is silence. I thought it was pretty wise. Someone who wants to bait you into argument, into an argument, it's going to be with people closer to you more than out in the street. The, gr the greatest thing you can do is not respond, which is difficult because you're already disposed to irritation, irritability, and this would be a great outlet. But as I shared with you, it won't be, could be a few minutes, could be a few hours, could be a few days, believe it or not, that you're going to get a rebound from that response and all of a sudden your symptoms return or they're increased or whatever, they, they don't go away. House devil, street angel is not good for you. We belong to Christ. We have to play by the rules. Play by the rules, things work out. I was going to say they go well, which they do in the end, but maybe not immediately. If you don't play by the rules, you're, you're in a Chinese handcuff. You're ever pulling, 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 hoping to get free. But the truth of it is that the harder you pull, the worse things get. We're aiming at being relaxed, which, biblically speaking, would be the word peace. My peace, I leave with you. Jesus said it. I leave you my peace. Until you see me, in the world you'll have tribulations, Jesus said again. But you'll have peace in me. Well, that's why we signed on to become Christians. Have our sins forgiven and to have the peace of Christ. The peace, of Christ, the peace that belongs to Christ inside of us. You can't do that if you're going to be street angel and at the same time house devil. And I'm not even talking about the sinful aspect of it as much as I am, is that that's just not, A, it's not consistent with what you want to be. You want to overcome these symptoms. And it's also not, um, well, it's just not, the, the, it's just not what you want to be. It's not anymore. You're disposed already to irritability, to nervousness, and fear and anger, whatever. We want to eliminate those things. We want to at least diminish them. And in the process, we diminish our symptoms. You diminish your symptoms. So, uh, just quickly, I want to throw this in. Social media does have some value sometimes. I've got to admit it. I uh, read someplace that this, this statement... And this was the way it was phrased. The faker you are, uh, the more people will either like you or the more friends you're going to have. And the more truthful you are, the less people are going to like you and the less friends you're going to have. Well, I, I think there's some truth to that. You know, you can turn on social media, you can turn on YouTube here, and some people just... <laughs> they're just talking nonsense. But the people say, well, that's really, you know. But the truth of it is, and I share this with you all the time, what will get you free from your nervous symptoms is hard work, and that's the truth. I'm only supposing some people subscribe to this channel thinking they're going to get some life hack. Okay, I'm not giving you hacks. Um, I'm giving you wisdom that I've gleaned over 50 years, but they're not hacks. Somebody else wants instant relief, which is normal, you know, normal response for people with tormenting symptoms. But even if you could relieve someone's symptom or symptoms immediately, it's not a lasting cure. What we're looking for is the lasting cure. And in order to do that, you have to be consistent in how you control your temper, your disposition, towards irritability, which is really not your fault, unless you're not controlling your thoughts or your tongue, then you're contributing to your own unhealthy condition. So, what is your position towards what you're suffering from? Do you believe there's a cure? There is. Do you believe Christ is the healer? He is. Do you believe you can set, be set free? Many people have been including me. Okay, I assume you're watching this broadcast because you believe that. 
at your position. But when you get up, because of your symptoms, you're already disposed to irritability and fear and all that there. That has to be corrected here with your thinking, lining it up with the Bible, and also with controlling your words, your body language, and all that. As you do, you'll make progress and you'll go forward. All right, I hope, I hope you understand. It's kind of a deep, maybe deeper than what you're hearing me say. This is, and it's not easy to accomplish, but it's got to be done. Let me pray for you today. Father, help my friends today in Jesus' name to overcome their disposition of irritability, which is not their fault, but teach them how, in Jesus' name, to control their thoughts and their tongue and be just become one person all the way through and do the hard work and the discipline it takes to be free. Send your grace and your mercy as well, Father, of course. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, don't forget, if you haven't already, to uh, download this sheet, 12 Principles of Renewed, Pastor Ray Barnett, Time for Truth Ministries, Mental Health tab, go down there, uh, download it. I'd like to have you with us, be part of this course, so subscribe to the channel. I exhort you to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, even if it's just an amen or whatever, an emoji, because that helps the algorithm to uh, change, and more people have an opportunity to learn what you're learning all right again we're expecting the whole week tomorrow is friday already to be as beautiful as it is today and uh, with that being the case i will be with you outdoors tomorrow here on the oasis always remember no matter what you're going through let the peace of god rule in your heart god willing i'll see you here again tomorrow on the oasis